So let's talk about being stupid in conversation. What do I mean by that? Well, I'm going to use a real world example to kind of explain. Let me tell you a story. So I was on the chairlift the other day here in uh, Montana. I live by a ski resort. I was up skiing. This guy gets on the chairlift next to me. He is a talker to say the least. He starts asking me questions. So where are you from? I tell him I'm from here and he's from here. We both realize we're both from the same town. And then he proceeds to tell me all kinds of data about the town I currently live in that I already know. And he's just rambling off data. There's no sense of feeling. There's no sense that he even knows what I'm feeling. He's no sense that he is even curious about what I'm feeling. There's just a sense that he wants to share his data. Now he's a nice enough guy. And that was probably his defense mechanism because he probably didn't know any other way to connect to people. So he just throws a bunch of stuff at the wall and hopes some of it sticks. And the truth is, is that's about the worst way to get to know somebody. If you wanna become a powerful conversationalist and you wanna to learn to open somebody up, this video is for you. We're gonna go into that right now. Now, with that said, uh, before I get into it, I wanna invite you to like, subscribe, share, and to comment. If you've got any experience with this, with going through this with somebody being um, held hostage, let's say, by a kind of conversation, definitely put the comments below. And if you've got any experience being really good at conversation, put the comments below because we can definitely learn from you too. Now let's dive in. Today, I'm gonna cover three different things that are super important in a really good conversation. And I'm gonna keep them really simple, really brief, so you can start to apply these right away. Now there's lots of nuances to a good conversation. There's lots of feeling and depth to a conversation. And that's all really important stuff. But in this, I'm gonna keep it pretty simple. Now, the fourth thing is going to be the kicker. I know I said three, but the fourth is gonna be a bonus. And the fourth thing, the bonus thing, is gonna be the kicker that makes all this work. So make sure you stay tuned to the end to make sure you get the one piece that actually makes the other three work. Because without that last piece, the other three won't work. Number one, ask two to three questions to every share. On average, on average, you really want to be super curious about the other person. You want to be stupid. If you know a lot about painting and this other person, this beautiful woman you just met as a painter, be stupid for a little while. You don't need to share everything you know about painting. Ask her, what kind of painting do you do? Oh, really? You do oil paintings? Tell me more about it. Oh, what size paintings? Like, do you have a painting you can do for this wall? Oh, can you show me a picture of your painting on your phone? You see, what you want to do is really be curious about the other person. You don't want to, in the beginning, throw all your data in. Now, after she shared, let's say two to three times, then you give a share, something you really care about that relates to the topic at hand. Now, think about it this way, two to three questions to every share. Now, what does this do and why does it work? Well, if you're genuine, if you really care and you do this, then what's going to happen is it's going to be like a safe door is opening. Now imagine that you meet somebody for the first time. You've got 30 seconds, let's say to three minutes to really open this person up and imagine they have a safe door on their heart. And what you're working on doing is opening that door just a little bit at a time until they're open and flowing with you and they're connected to you and you're connected to them. So what does that look like? Well, every time I ask a genuine question, authentic question, it causes the heart to open a little bit more. They get, in a sense, curious. If you authentically listen and you are truly curious about what they have to say, then they'll open again. And the more stupid you are inside, the more you empty your mind, the easier it is to be curious, to really want to know what they have to say, to look at them and have them feel you being curious. The more thinking you are, the more analytical you are, the harder it is for them to feel you. So after this person, this her or if you're meeting somebody let's say a business meeting you're meeting a guy and you've shared let's say you've asked two or three questions then it's time to share share something simple maybe your experience with painting i've painted one painting in my life and it was so much fun i god i wish i'd done it more and uh maybe it's the time that your best friend really rediscovered his love for painting and he can't stop now he paints all the time matter of fact this is a true story i have a friend that he'll get a bottle of wine and he'll paint all night long because he just can't stop. It's like meditative for him. And that's a great question. I'll share that with her. And then I'll say, is it like that for you? And really take it a little deeper with true curiosity. So think about it this way. Step number one is two, three, maybe on occasion, four questions to every share. And then you share as an example of you being vulnerable too, sharing something real from your life. If she's not opening right away, you might wanna do one quick share early on as an example to show her 
that you're willing to go there too. You're willing to share and then go back to a couple questions. Keep the questions light, fun, but a lot of feeling. Now, step number two is learn to truly be curious. The truth is, is that you can become curious just for curiosity's sake. You can learn and train yourself to be a curious person, to look at other people with curiosity and to just want to know more about them. You can be curious about things you already know about even. Like you could ask questions and in, in, let's say she knows a lot about photography and so do you. In the beginning, you can just not say how much you know about photography. Just ask questions. Be curious. Tell me, more. how do you, why do you take pictures like that? Oh, I love to take pictures. You know, you just go deeper and deeper into the principle. And then what you're going to realize is that curiosity is a real thing. Curiosity comes from innocence. It comes from, again, being stupid. The more stupid you are, the less you're trying to be intelligent, the less you're trying to prove to somebody else you know a lot the more curious you can be, the more you can just give that other person. And I want you to think of it this way, the gift of curiosity, the gift of appreciation, the gift of your joy, because if you truly let somebody in, it can be an amazing experience. So authentic curiosity is step number two. Step number three, you have to authentically care. You have to mean it like literally. And again, this comes back to that innocence. The more stupid you are, the more innocent you can become and you can authentically care about the other person. This doesn't mean that you're codependent. This doesn't mean that you're needy. This just means that you care about them as a human being and you care about what they have to say. You care about what they feel. And so the more you care, the more your curiosity will ramp up. If I really care about other people and I really look at other people with appreciation, which again is a skill set you can practice, the more you will ramp up the curiosity. Now, I know this is kind of similar to step number two and step number three are both similar. And I kind of talked about this a little bit in step two, but it's that important that you get those two right. Because if you authentically are curious and you authentically care and have appreciation, then what happens, step number one becomes a thousand times easier. Now, before I go to the bonus step, I want to remind you guys to check out my book, The Art of Fearless Seduction. Uh, there'll be a link somewhere in this video for it. Now let's continue on. What is the bonus step? To me, this is the most important step. If you want to learn to develop authentic curiosity and to authentically care about somebody, to be able to get these questions right, to be able to flow with them, then you got to learn to feel. You got to learn some level of embodiment. And the real key is when I really want to connect with somebody, I have practiced literally feeling from this part of my body. I, I imagine that my consciousness is down here and that I'm speaking from my heart and I'm actually letting people into my heart so I can feel because the heart feels emotions, right? So as I let her into my heart, especially as she opens more and more, I'm going to feel more of her emotions. And what's going to happen is I'm going to create what I call the bubble. Have you ever had that, that had this happen? I'm sure you have. There's a sense that a bubble gets created between you and another person where you can talk endlessly, maybe for hours on end, maybe all night long. And you two just feel each other. And it feels like you've known each other forever, but you've just met. Well, that's happened because this part of your body where the heart is, the, the heart, the embodiment part of your heart has opened up enough. And so has hers to create a nice connection back and forth, a flow of energy where she can feel your emotions and your, you can feel mine. That's what we call entrainment. You've actually created this state of entrainment. This then allows you to feel the curiosity. And this also allows you to feel appreciation, joy and gratitude for the other person. And it also allows you to basically just sit back and feel each other almost without saying a word. It's really amazing. Now, it won't start out that way. But if you start with these questions and really open this person up and you practice caring, you practice being authentic and you really practice feeling like communicating from the heart, you're going to start to notice a difference as you get better and better at this. Now, it might, you might not get really good at it at first. It might take practice. It might take time. And it might take a little bit of trial and error because you're going to probably pop back up to your head, pop back down to your heart, get confused. But with a little bit of time, when you start to get it, it becomes truly addictive. You're not going to want to talk to anybody any other way. You're going to want to let everybody in this way. You're going to want to feel the world this way because it feels that good. Now, one warning. Sometimes when people first start feeling with their heart, it is a little painful. Because if you got any sadness locked in there, you got any little anger locked in there, you got something locked in there you don't want to feel, it's probably going to want to come out, to be honest. But once you get through that and you really start to feel that sense of appreciation for the person in front of you, they're going to be shocked at the difference and what's going to happen. And then when this starts truly guiding your conversations, 
you're no longer going to need to worry about when to ask a question, when to share, because this will guide you. You're going to start doing it naturally. And the one essential ingredient to really develop this is being stupid. You got to learn to shut off the brain. You got to learn to literally kind of be ignorant a little bit, to, to let this take over so that you can really practice just being curious because so that's what's going to lead you there ultimately in the end. Okay, so hopefully you got a lot of value out of this. Make sure to start practicing it right away, put it into practice and definitely check out my previous video on the secrets of turn on. You know that I love the embodiment and in this video I talk about how you can start to learn to use your turn on to attract women more. An embodiment based process. There'll be a link somewhere in this video for that video. So with that said, remember, only the confident really live. I'll see you in the next video.